and we'll start now. All right, welcome back to another show. Uh, I am your host today, Todd Exodus Webb, aka Holy Shinobi, and today we have Jarrell, aka Gingerell, and Marvel's What If. We've seen it. All right, welcome back to another show. We've seen it. We have myself, Todd X and Sweb, Holy Shinobi. We got Jarrell on the camp panel today. Uh, this is We've Seen It on Mighty Star Podcast. And mm-hmm. today we're talking about Marvel's What If. First, Jarrell, how are you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm good. doing really good. How about you? I'm doing, I'm doing all right. Doing blessed here to talk about superheroes cartoons and superhero cartoons specifically today (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um looking at my little agenda here um so today we're talking about marvel's what if this is a new project from marvel studios where it is basically taking a concept of a comic book which is you know a what if story it's a one-off it's a spin-off about some of our favorite heroes and they're all heroes from the MCU, which if you were following uh, the past couple of talks we've had, we've been talking about back to back for the past couple of weeks now. Mm-hmm. Um, they are on streaming on Disney Plus. Uh, there have been two episodes so far, and we're here to do a little bit of a recap about it. Just want to give some info for those who don't know. Um, what if is Marvel's latest animated project, taking some of your favorite Marvel characters and putting them in what if scenarios, uh, kind of spinning them on their own heads. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's done in animation, kind of this 2D CGI type of thing, um, kind of in the kind of a Disney style. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've been following any of the uh, TV shows, your Lokis, your WandaVisions, you know that like we're in the multiverse. Now we're doing, we're doing alternate timelines, dimension hopping and everything uh, that we see you know, it's supposed to be, like, potentially brought up, you know, in the later movies, like, in live action. So we have our uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, right, supposed to be coming out. And, you know, they, I've heard people say that you may see some of these characters you see in the show show up there. So they're kind of just climbing up. Marvel does not waste resources, (laughs) y'all. Everything is connected. So getting that out the way, let's talk about episode one. Uh, What if... Peggy Carter got into <laughs> uh, the uh, got the shield, and not uh, our golden boy uh, Chris Jamal Evans. What? <laughs> Chris Jamal. <laughs> Chris Jamal <laughs> Evans. Oh, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the last. So what if, man? Um, was a, I mean, I enjoyed the episode a lot. It's basically, yeah. you know, if you remember back in man, it's like 2000, 2008, 2010. Uh, you know. Captain America becomes Captain mm-hmm. America, gets a super soldier serum, you know, gets buffed and somehow grows uh, two feet taller somehow. And you know, <laughs> he's punching Nazis and saving the day. Um, but in this alternate timeline, um, Peggy Carter, who was like the, the agent, the recruit, you know, mm-hmm. she starts, she actually starts S.H.I.E.L.D., which is mm-hmm. interesting because We'll, we'll get to that at the end of yeah. you know, at the end of the episode. But yeah, she becomes the new Captain America, Captain Carter. And, you know, it's still set in World War II. They're still fighting, you know, the Nazis and, and Hydra and stuff like that. Uh, there, It was a really good episode, I feel like. Good mm-hmm. changes without disrespecting any of the characters. I was concerned that <laughs> they were just going to, like, sideline my boy, uh Steve Rogers, but I, I like what they did with it. What do you think, Drew? What are your, what are your thoughts on the episode? Well, yeah, so um, first and foremost, I'm actually loving the What If series. Um, we'll get to probably episode two later on, but the first episode, yeah, it, it was definitely a change for me um, seeing um, Captain Carter take yeah, on Captain that role. Carter. That, that was incredible. You know, she kind of reminds me, in terms of the build, she kind of reminds me of She-Hulk. Yeah, no, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, no, she's uh, she got swole. She got swole for the role <laughs> for sure. Definitely. Uh, no, there's like the action was dope. Uh, there's a lot of action. I was not expecting 
so much action for the first episode. Uh, the first yeah. episode felt like a, it felt like a whole movie for it to it be did. Like thirty minutes. It felt very long in a good way. Um, Steve doesn't get totally sidelined, which I was uh, grateful for. He he actually gets a pretty cool consolation prize. Doesn't get to be the cap. He's gonna be Captain America, but he's like he's Iron Man. He's literally the first Iron Man. He's the first Iron Man. So like Howard Stark, he he makes him the Iron Man suit for Tony Stark. We already know my opinions on Tony Stark. We won't get into it here. But uh, (laughs) yeah, so he makes him the first, uh, what do they call it? The Hydra Stomper. Yeah, they did Uh, call him that. It looks kind of just like the first Iron Man suit, like the first Iron Man uh, movie, which is great. Uh, I thought that was dope um you know people got there's a lot of fan service in this one because you know you got to see a lot of peggy and steve and like that was the whole thing about the mcu was like you know you never got to talk to peggy and then when he got to she was too old and died and then he went back in time a whole thing you've seen it (laughs) you you've already seen it but no i like the episode i like the art style was very unique i'm an animation head um studying animation you know trying to break into that field myself so it was very much a treat to watch uh marvel do something a little different it felt um, t- tell me if you feel the same way it felt very disney the way the animation looked like everyone yeah. had big eyes and rosy cheeks but they're all the same character and you look they're like they're it's like they're the exact actor i guess more or less. yeah yeah I, I see what you're saying yeah and then like a lot of uh if you look at the credits a lot of the original actors came back in the voices. So yeah. It really is like the characters for most of them, except I think except for Steve Rogers. Yeah. Everyone else was the same. And they especially were hmm, go ahead. I was just gonna say it was kind of weird because he it was actually like a it sounded just like Chris Evans. Yeah. For a little it, bit. What, yeah, it wasn't Chris Evans, so you kind of forget, but it was like Sebastian Stan, who is Winter Soldier. Um uh, I can't remember the acting with Peggy Carter, but she, it's the same. Even the minor roles, they have like some of the old characters from like the, the first, uh, what you call it? The first uh, Captain America movie, okay. they came back and they did it, which is really cool. I like the attention, the detail they're doing. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and let's see. Yeah. So as we know, this Ultimate Universe, Steve becomes the Iron Man, Hydra Stomper. And he is totally cool. Well, this is he very is. much like, it's very much Peggy's show, and I liked it. It wasn't like too, it was just like, it was just good. It was just good. I <laughs> liked it. A lot of action. They were fighting a lot. How do you feel about the ending? The ending, if you don't know, they're, you know, they got to stop the test rack, like in the first one, and they take it, they like to go, they get to a castle because they're trying to open up the portal to another dimension, blah, 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 circumstances. Uh, Peggy ends up getting caught in like a time portal, right? Into yep. an alternate dimension, right? Where I guess we don't know what happens to Steve or Buck. Because Buck, oh, that's another thing. Like Bucky never like gets his arm taken off or yeah, captured yeah. by Hydra. So like, there's no Winter Soldier and there's no Steve Rogers Captain America <laughs> already. Just on one decision, I think that is bananas. Yeah. So yeah. Anything that stood out to you before you yeah. get to the ending of it? Well, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, again, I, I loved her character. I feel like she was a little bit more Captain Carter is what I'm talking about. I feel like she was yeah. a little bit more brutal than Captain America. You know? Oh I mean? no, for sure. Yeah, no, she's but... like, she's like a spy, <laughs> is soldier. Well, remember, Steve is just. Oh a guy. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like Steve was just like before all of this. I still don't really know how Captain America is that good at fighting because he's like just a, a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um he's like 25 i think when it's he's just a dude he's like scrawny and like malnourished and weak <laughs> and he just gets an upgrade so if it's that's like it's like maxing out your stats if you're weak yeah you're 10 times stronger than your weaker self but captain carter was already in shape and yeah, spy yeah, yeah. so you're just taking a pro you're just 10 xing a pro so it made sense to me why she'd be a better captain america than yeah. steve that's not I never felt like that was cheated or slighted or anything at all. It just makes sense. You're just a better yeah. version of a super cool character. Uh, yeah. Now she was dope. I, her action, like she was doing, she was she was doing something I never saw Steve do. She was throwing yes. motorcycles, <laughs> uh, flipping trucks. Like that was that was dope. Twice, 
I was very impressed uh, by yeah. that. Um, Howard Stark was my favorite character, though. In this How so? Because he was just great. He's just great <laughs> and not his son. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not his son. He not. Wow. He's not his son. He's just solving problems and helping people. And you know, he still got the Stark swag. But yeah, it's he does. You this, but it, you see the source. You see where we could not, we, we didn't go wrong. So, you know, I'm grateful. He was, I, I think it was really funny. There were some really funny moments uh, with uh, Howard Stark. Uh, very much enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, we're gonna speed through this first one because I really want to dive deep to the the second I'm, episode. Me too, Loki. <laughs> so like, she gets caught into the time portal and she comes out and she sees uh, Sam Jackson, Nick Fury, who's also voices his character again, nope. with Hawkeye, Jeremy Renner. So they all, so they all voice to their own. Besides Chris Evans, that's so weird. Yeah, that was, was so weird. I'm pretty sure that they must have been like caught between movies or something. Maybe. Maybe uh so yeah uh and she's in the past she's like 70 years in the future and you know she she says she's trying to do what she been trying to do which is stop the war and there's always another war i will i will i will say this sorry to interrupt but i will say this i i kind of like where she went through the portal and you know only because i was like how are they going to segue this because you know in the captain america films he's frozen for 70 years Right, but right. for her, it's like, you know, she's, you know, still in the, she didn't get, you know, in she, an iceberg. Yeah, she didn't, so she didn't age. Either. Right. So I was just like, how are they going to do this? So I kind of, I kind of like the decision that they went with. It was very clever for them. It was. To like, it was a very clever way to do it. Uh, <laughs> Tesseract, which is crazy because the Tesseract never gets stolen by Loki in the first one for the first Avengers to happen. It just opens up a portal. Yeah. No, it's like some very good creative decisions. Yeah that happened uh yep and that's kind of the first episode very strong opening but we're here to talk about that second episode though (laughs) yes we are this is what we care about man (sighs) you want to talk about it yeah dude let me let me just i'm I'm not gonna go too far into it right now but dude the second episode is is better than the first but in my opinion in my opinion okay okay because it brings such a dynamic an interesting dynamic if t'challa or cha-cha is what someone calls him <laughs> we'll get into that oh later on no i tweet i tweeted the hell he's <laughs> like cha-cha, cha-cha. I, was like, mm. I was like no i was just like i t- i tweeted that i'm like marvel cha-cha <laughs> interesting yeah go on, but, go on, go on. yeah so it's taking um the perspective if uh t'challa was actually star lord and i was like when i first saw the trailer for it i was kind of skeptical because yeah. i was like how are they gonna incorporate how are they gonna make this work you know what i mean uh, without uh, yeah making it weird or whatever but they did an amazing job in my opinion because it was uh, like it it for me it brought it T'Challa, who's already a great Marvel character, yeah, and it yeah. made him even more interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, what if he was like it, they took the slant of him being abducted, you know, in space, right. and you know, really exploring? And I was instead like, of instead of uh, Peter Quill, Chris Pratt, right, right, Chris right, Pratt's Peter Quill, right, e- exactly. Everyone. Yeah, so yeah. the Guardians, and, the whole Guardians of the Galaxy movie is completely in this one eradicated, more or less. Yeah, a hundred percent. <laughs> but i loved it and you know honestly um i would say i have two favorites in this um I th- is his name Von wandu what's his name yandu i should know his name yandu, yandu. i don't know why but his character is amazing to me oh, no, his, his i just, I just love it. yeah no the actor yeah, is great. His name his name is escaping me uh but now nah, yandu yandu is great yandu was great in all of the movies now that i really think about it and like it was sad he died. I think he died in the second one. Then watch yeah. the Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh yeah, now he is really really cool. I like the themes in it about family and stuff. Let's get into the episode itself. So yeah, the premise is what if okay and the OG MC universe, ego is this living planet played by Kurt Russell, also in this episode. They really went the whole nine yards, yep. and he is. Uh, you know, having children across the galaxy so he can have an heir to his throne or whatever. One of them is, uh, you know, Peter Quill, who's on Earth. 
he's scouring mm. the universe to find all his kids. Uh, what ends up happening uh, is he sends a crew of scavengers to kidnap kids to bring them yeah. to Yandu, right? Uh, to, or Yandu brings them to Ego, right? Mm. So in this one, Yandu doesn't actually go find him himself. He outsources the job to yeah. the two scavenger folk, right? And they find T'Challa instead of Peter Quill because yeah, yeah. where Peter Quill is is a bunch of uh, alien energy. <laughs> and as we know, that's like the, the vibranium, right? Right. That's the vibranium. So it's super alien. And, and so they just thought, okay, if anything is going to be supernatural here, it's going to be this guy. I guess they just picked the first kid they saw. Yeah. Um, they, they make a weird line about like, you know, all the humans look the same. Uh, <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right. Where are we going with this? Yeah, what, what, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? Yeah, what, do you, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, and they cut to like 20 years in the future where he is the, uh, the new Star Lord. And the now infamous scene, right, of when he's like in the cave trying to find the power stone. And uh, the guy is like, you know, who are you? And he's like, I'm Star Lore. And he's like, who? They keep like they've done that line, I think, three times now in the MCU. Yeah. Right. So this is like an infamous scene. And this one, they put the respect on Dashala's name. He's he did. Like, don't he, he didn't have to say nothing. Like, oh, oh snap, it's <laughs> Star Lord. He said, Should we be bowing? Do we bowing <laughs> or kneeling? Like, yeah. what do we do here? This episode was really funny. Like, this yeah, is a really was. funny episode um not goofy but just like really funny um yeah. they, they have a lot of running jokes that build on top of each other uh so the guy ends up you know he ends up beating him up indiana jones style and takes mm. him the uh the main dude who we've seen in the movie like three three different movies now they yeah. because of the time travel stuff he's like the new recruit and they're you know he's like he's like so he's like a robin hood type character in this one the scavenger so what the yeah, child yeah. did instead of them being like space thieves they like steal from the rich and they get to the poor and they're more hero types here and uh you know they go to like a club they go to a space bar or whatever where we see some characters we kind of know kind of recognize and then we see my number three <laughs> we see wow me. Thanos, we see Mr. Thanos. Thanos, Mr. Nice Guy Thanos, dude. dude. This is this is this is a uh, this is like I'm re prison reform Thanos here. This is you know what's crazy? It works. Like I can see that. Like I was incredibly uncomfortable every time. I was uncomfortable, yes, but it, after a while, it worked, man. Because it's know. Josh. It's still Josh Brolin. It's yeah, the yeah, same. Yeah. So he's he's still voicing the character. It's just like, <sighs> like. I'm a good guy now. Because apparently, here's the thing. This is why, if we ever do like a top 10 uh, heroes of Marvel, T'Challa has to go higher on my list now. Yeah. Because he fact. somehow, he talked Thanos out of killing half the universe. Dude, that's crazy. On an argument. Crazy. Which is like, you, you're already, you're already number one. Okay. You're already number one. Wow. Um, I, what's funny is, so they talk about it, right? About Thanos, <laughs> like he talked me out about it, but I still think it's a good idea. Everyone's just like, ugh. Yeah, they keep like, calling him Captain Genocide or something. They keep him Cap yeah, they keep calling him like like Captain Genocide. They keep making the genocide because he's like, oh, it's not really genocide when you think about it. And it's just like, bro, just, just, <laughs> just don't let it ride, bro. Just stop Dude. it. And that's a running joke. I think it's funny because everyone talks about like, hey, well, Thanos is kind of problem it's kind of genocide when you really think about it yeah 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 uh, i'm glad i'm glad they pointed that out because folks have me can thanos fans have me concerned about what y'all are worried about so it was a good way to make it like point fun at it they go on a heist right to break mm -hmm. out some 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 uh some magic beans right yep. keeping with the fairy tale jack and the beans the episode talk. right to help feed the children across the universe something like that we also see our next character who we've seen before we see nebula who's blonde for some we ain't seen her like that though we ain't seen nebula like nebula. that <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> sis got a whole new life apparently um she, she got hair she seems happy oh, um, with the infamous Call line. Call T'Challa Cha-Cha. Call T'Challa Cha-Cha. Uh, there was a whole lot. I had to pause it just to process what was going on here. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, go oh. Google um, the Lady Smurf. She looks just like the Lady Smurf does. Uh, she's Low like, she's, cause she's, she's dressed in white and she's got yeah. the blonde hair. I know they did that on purpose. 
Um, but yeah, you know, she's 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 like a she's like a femme fatale femme noir character in this one. Mm. She's telling them about the heist, and you know, they're going on this heist, and this is where T'Challa finds out. Oh, this is also the interesting part. Apparently, Yandu still lies to T'Challa, like he lied yeah. to Peter Quill about like his, I guess his parents being dead or something. Yeah, yeah. Here that he lied tells like Wakanda is destroyed which yeah. is like whoa that's a that's a big bomb to drop on us like what really? happened and we thought we like we believe it because like that's it was an unreliable narrator situation so they go on the heist and then he we he goes and stops the collector still which is like he's not a villain in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie but he's like a he's like a mini boss because he has like the power stone but he's yeah, like yeah. the main antagonist in this one, right? Yeah, he is. Uh, and he, they go and get these magic seeds that he's holding hostage. And there we see he's keeping people in cages. Mm-hmm. And and then, uh, you know, they get captured. T'Challa gets captured. And he says something really interesting about, like, you know, where I come from, people frown upon men in cages. So I like how they're, yeah. they're keeping the, the racial dialogue is still going. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. in space. I, this is exactly what I expect from black people in space. Yeah. <laughs> still being black. <laughs> still being black in space. So we love yeah. we love to see it. Um I will I will say, oh my bad. Um, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I will say this. I did enjoy the collector being the antagonist yeah. and uh, Thanos being an ally yeah, on the hero it's, squad. It's that was a good so, dynamic. It's so weird. He just has Thanos had like he's no real ambitions, and he's still <laughs> He's still Nebula's dad, and it's just really yeah. they're not they're cool about it. It's just awkward, kinda. It's just, yeah. it's just a weird. There's a weird energy going weird on. Weird energy. You know, he's getting they're getting therapy, so you know what else? What else can we do for Thanos? Um, yeah. Villains need therapy, apparently. <laughs> um, the next bomb they drop is that like you know, T'Challa finds out that. Wakanda is not destroyed, and that uh, there's a spaceship. They got a Wakandan spaceship. <laughs> they do. Um, which is okay. So, what's cool about that is that that's not like a new idea. So, a few years ago, I feel like it's like Tanisi Coates did a uh, he did a book on Marvel for Black Panther. It's about essentially Wakandan space, like explorers going out into deep space. There's a section of like the Dora Milaje that go into space. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure that's where they reference a lot of this from, um, which is really dope to see. And then he sees like his father, you know, talking about, you know, how he says a line, I wrote it down somewhere. It's really, cause it's really good. Um, pulling it up on Twitter. Um, <laughs> he talks about ways to just how special, you know, the child is. And I know they're kind of talking about, uh, you know, the late Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, yeah passed away and this is actually his probably one of his last performances which is like yeah. really 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 powerful at least on the marvel side i'm pretty sure we'll see him again in some more episodes and what if because everything's supposed to like build on top of each other right, right. um so, but this is kind of like his centric episode kind of like his uh big last hurrah i'm trying to find the quote he says because it's really got me real emotional like if i can find it um all right, I can't find it. All right. But basically, he's talking about how, you know, he's something like on the lines of you're like a star that lights up the universe, something like that. And that, you know, wherever you are, you know, you, you'll fit in, you'll find a way. And, you know, it's it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A really good tribute to Chadwick. And, you know, the end of the episode or, you know, he fights the collector, you know, yeah. still being T'Challa, T'Challa fashion. He doesn't have the heart-shaped herb, though. That, dude, is, I, yeah, that's true. He doesn't have the, you know, the strength. He is, yeah, he's he's not like super, you know, but he's still taking care of business. So I appreciate that. That was cool. He, it was. He has no heart shaped herb, but it's like also Yandu is still his surrogate father. So they kind of team up and they fight. People, okay, this episode I'd be concerned because I was scared that I was gonna go on Twitter the next day and be like, let's fire Chris Pratt because oh um, no <laughs> oh, i was afraid because he was a better star lord he was and i will objectively stand by that yes he's an objectively better more entertaining version of yep. star lord and I'm, that scares me a little bit because 
I'm afraid that, you know, you know, everyone's got, you know, haters and whatnot. And I'm, I'm afraid right. that the Chris Proud hater crowd may, you know, be like, hey, man, can we get an alternate version of this That's character? Because he was very good. It was very entertaining. I had a good time. Uh, yeah. Skipping to the end of the episode, there's a cool moment with Nebula and Thanos where they, they fight as a father or daughter situation, which is good. You see how many things yeah. get reconciled just because Charlie yeah. is in the room. Just a lot of problems solved. And yeah, what's cool, right, is he finds out his home still exists and they mm. come back. And yeah, it's just like a whole family exchange thing, which is beautiful. I was very Disney, like wrapped up in a nice little neat bow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, I, I will say this. Episode. Yeah, I loved it a lot. I will say this. I, I will comment a little bit about the collector. So I love the fact that they make him the antagonist in terms yeah. of his build. This his dude ripped abs. <laughs> if you right, if you if you if anyone watched Dragon Ball Z, this is character named Broly. And this yeah, dude yeah, he's built like Broly yo, for sure. <laughs> this dude is a Broly. But I like the, down to the like the uh, the fur collar. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I like the fact that um, in the collector's, um, I don't know, his arena or whatever, he literally in the room. fight, dude, he's pulling out items yeah, from we've seen heroes already. and yeah. villains that we've seen. And it's so cool seeing Oh, that. yeah. Mm. He's got the helmet from Thor 3. He's got, he never he got, fought, he never fought with uh, the shields, right? No, he didn't. He didn't fight with but the shields. But he had, he had, he had the shield, he had the hammer. Um, he had Korg's some... arm, bro. He had Korg's arm. Oh, yeah, and he killed Dude. Korg. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, there's no way they're talking about Korg. He killed Korg. He killed Korg, bro. Instantly, instant terrorists. <laughs> in straight Crazy. to jail. Uh, yeah, I was, that hurt. We love Korg. Korg is yeah, played by Taika with Taika Watiti, who directed uh, Thor 3 and is doing the next door movie as well uh so we love we love taika watiti and I, yeah i hurt we love man i was i was hurt i was like man yeah. he's dead <laughs> i see i'm starting to notice the theme is these these, these changes come at the cost of something else yep. Yep. i'm sad that cork had to go but it is what it is <laughs> um yeah yeah what anything else that stood out to you about this this one um I, I I like the fact that even though there were some serious moments, it was still lighthearted. You know, yeah, it's right, it, it's right. like I I had you know I smiled, I felt emotional at times, but it didn't it didn't feel like it was too overbearing either way. Like it was too uh, emotional or too serious or too goofy and too silly. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, a, it's got a lot of replay value. Like I'll probably watch this episode again tonight. Me too. It's just. It's a good, you feel good, you feel warm and fuzzy. What's interesting also is that like the Watcher doesn't appear in the first, okay, so that's the other thing, right? So yeah. The Watcher is like the the narrator of the whole what if thing. Right. We don't see him in the first episode, but we see him in like this one. He's like in every shot, you just see him just like watching. Yeah, just watching, things. observing. <laughs> Menacing, menacingly, just uh, watching things go down um yeah are, are we going to talk about the ending though what about it like, okay you, you can talk about it all right so when the original star lord um yeah. his dad meets him at the dairy queen at the, <laughs> the dairy queen right <laughs> and he said well, I, was like, that, I was like is that dairy queen <laughs> i know no. marvel but... I didn't know Marvel had to deal with Dairy Queen like that. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but he said we're closed. And you know, if you haven't watched um, Guardians of the Galaxy, he basically, the second one, he, uh, the second one you you realize that, you know, Star-Lord is, is a god, basically. Yeah, he's like, half, he's like a half celestial immortal being, right? But right. In this universe, he just grows up, same age, you know, he's like in his 20s. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he go, you know opens up like hey you got some time to just deal with your dad kurt russell just pops up and that's pops it up. i was but like that's, wow, dude, it's interesting it's gonna bring a different dynamic now because i want now, it to be evil i don't want yeah. it i want to see a evil chris pratt star lord character it would be dope that would be it would be interesting I, i'm curious if they like bring that up and um what do you call it you know because I, I if you saw if you watch the trailer there's like a whole the Avengers still form. It's just, it's all different. I'm yeah. curious if like that'll play into it. I'm that's whole, that's the cool part about it is like, you never know what they're going to flip. 
right uh, i got i heard an interview from the head writer mm. um for the show ac bradley the other day where she was talking about how the next episode i think is a thor centric episode i think Ooh. okay i think so i don't know much about it but i know it's i think it's got some thor in it if i'm if she's quote her or not me if that's what's going on so you know keep your eyes peeled for that these are the type of shows that reward you for watching all the marvel shows and yes. movies and stuff like that so if you've seen them you're gonna have a good time because you're gonna know all the references you don't have to know all the comic books to get right. all this stuff if you do great but all you need to see is the show the tv shows it's only 27 movies and <laughs> three <laughs> three tv shows is it yeah. three or is it four no it's, you're right it's three. it's three is it it's wait wandavision loki what's the last thing you know the loki was the last thing so it's only three it's only three shows yeah, and 27 three. Movies. you're right you're right you right. good like you got you got we that in quarantine. we in quarantine um <laughs> but yeah hopefully this will be an episode we can do like a, a recap we can do reoccurring yeah uh, we got the two episodes so we'll probably do another one next week capturing whatever happens next week mm -hmm. uh i think we are at time let me check yep we are at time wow thank you everyone for uh, listening in to we seen it another episode i'm your host Alexis Webb, we have Ginger Rell. We appreciate you sticking around, tuning in. See us next time you see us. Um, only on my sharp network. And uh yeah, we'll end it here. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. Signing off. Signing off. All right.